What's up everybody, D-Man back. Welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Godzilla Minus One news and updates. I have no idea where we are right now. Is Godzilla minus one out in Japan? I, <laughs> I don't know. Is today Godzilla day? I don't know. Could be, could also not be. Either way, we're gonna be doing a chill Godzilla news and updates today, going over some events that happened last month on our way to catch back up to where we are now. All right, starting out, I wanna give a shout out to Gojira03 for his Godzilla minus one custom poster. This is one he made. It's pretty sick. I like the atomic breath that he gave and I like that he gave Godzilla glowing eyes. I also really like the nuclear background and I like that plane flying by very wartime very nice fits the theme for minus one very well this next one this is actually an upgraded piece for someone else's art we've talked about before this is from despot 232323 and he improved his godzilla minus one fan art seems like he got some instructor feedback on things that he could do to make it better and it looks awesome and this kind of goes along with what i was talking about at the time this is actually relevant to the kind of stuff we were talking about on the channel when he made this because this kind of came out right when we were in the midst of our burning godzillas or red godzilla discussions as we were talking about for Godzilla Minus One. So it was pretty cool to see. So I wanted to give him some shout out too. I've shown off that art before, but I wanted to show it off again because it seemed he was pretty proud of the upgrades. Next comes from iGun UK 17 And this is a super cute one showing off a bunch of different Godzilla heads. I think it's really fantastic. I especially like the coloring he's done on 54 with all of the orange on his face. That looks really great. We've got 54, 55, 62, 64, 65, 71, 73, 84, 95, 2001, 2002, 2004, 2016, and 2023. And this is a 70th anniversary Godzilla edition. He's also done some of the crossover Godzilla's heads. So this one's got like 6264. This one's got 7384. The next one's Shin Godzilla and minus one. And they look wonderful. I really like his Shin Godzilla and minus one designs too. Minus one looks fantastic and Shin Godzilla just looks so goofy. I love it. Not entirely sure what made him pick those designs. Maybe those are just his favorites from each era, but I'm here for it. This next one comes from WOC 20,000. And this is a little stop motion he's made featuring Yamazaki's Godzilla minus one and also Yamazaki's tricycle car from always which I really like I think that's a lot of fun I think this is a super cute one and I wanted to show it off because I appreciate all sorts of different art and I want to show it all off okay next up we've got some figure news Bandai HG figures were revealed featuring the gargantuas which is honestly cooler than minus one in my opinion I think that's sick that they're being featured they never get the love they deserve it's got Gigan 72 and of course Godzilla minus one and seeming grayscale but these are pretty sick they're pretty small these are always like little guys and they're pretty cheap here's a photo of the actual bandai hg godzilla minus one and i just wanted to show that off looks pretty cool next up is the banpresto toho monster series monster roar attack godzilla this has been revealed it stands at 5.5 inches and runs you 29.99 i personally don't think it looks as good as it should for standing at 5.5 inches but whatever it's pretty decent good sculpting in the body and the legs at least and the tail looks pretty nice the spines are a little lacking and the face is lacking for me but looks pretty good overall although that's 30 bucks i would not pay 30 bucks for that sorry ban presto i know you can do better you did better back in the shin godzilla days speaking of ban presto their next one is the ban presto toho monster series in sheared monster godzilla and i really like this one it's got the chibi godzilla design i think this one looks really great this one stands at 4.7 inches tall and is 29.99 i really like how striking his eyes are we've actually shown this guy off before so i just wanted to quickly cover it again because it kind of got surfaced around this time i like the tail pose. I like the posture. I think it all looks pretty solid. The only thing that I don't love is how you can clearly see the back piece of plastic attached to the front on his back. That's pretty distracting and for $30 you'd expect a little higher quality. A couple new photos of the Bandai Movie Monster series Godzilla were revealed and they look pretty sweet. I like the glowing orange eyes and I like the brown all over his body and the gray looks pretty decent here. Doesn't quite capture how brown he is in the movie but here are some photos of him actually out of the packaging on a shelf and you can see what he looks like in real life. A Godzilla 70th anniversary calendar was revealed for 2024 featuring minus one on the cover this is a wonderful photo of minus one that's a great cover to feature we've got a look on the inside of the calendar and we can see january features 1954's godzilla may features 1974 and 1975's mechagodzilla godzilla versus mechagodzilla and terror of mechagodzilla and november of course being godzilla's birth month features all the godzillas except the animated ones and the american ones so actually not all the godzillas but all the ones that toho seems to like it's also kind of a whack picture 
picture they chose for minus one where half of his face is covered by a train but I guess it goes along with the one they picked for Godzilla vs. Megagiras as well so at the very least he's not the only one. This next one I think is very fun 89 is my life it says this is the Godzilla x Yomiuri Giants collaboration poster uh, of course that's something we've talked about on the channel before this baseball collaboration that Godzilla minus one was doing with the Giants it's a lot of fun it's actually a pretty decent render of Godzilla too. he's very HD in the background and this is honestly kind of a banger poster I think it's a lot of fun but there was a poster to promote the event and of course this is not the first time Godzilla's crossed over with baseball before as we have pictures here of Chibi Godzilla and Godzilla 1954 hanging out at a baseball game it looks like Godzilla's taking the first bat this has been a tradition for Godzilla for a long time dating at least back to the early millennium era where Godzilla would appear at baseball games and we've talked about on the channel in the Shin Godzilla days as well Godzilla coming out in the baseball field and throwing the first pitch or whatever also is the Giants featured in Godzilla x Mecha Godzilla? I'm pretty sure they are speaking of Godzilla xing things this is Godzilla x Kawansei Gakuin University I don't think I said that right at all and this is a collaboration that Godzilla minus one is doing with this university that they've done these mock-up posters of Godzilla attacking the campus and it's kind of awesome <laughs> who doesn't want their campus to be attacked by Godzilla that'd be wonderful <laughs> but this is a collaboration that Godzilla minus one is doing with this university and it will feature a special diorama Godzilla photo exhibition Godzilla screenings a talk show and more so that was all announced and in addition to that the university details were posted and this is going to be held on November 5th participation and prizes are being offered for a photo rally where you can submit photos chibi Godzilla will be there for a greeting there will be a screening for Godzilla 1954 there and a panel with Kazuaki Kishida who's a Godzilla minus one producer and Toho executive as well as Go Miyazaki who is a Godzilla room Toho Corp representative so that's all good stuff and if you live in the area go check those links out and you can maybe go over there and enjoy it next up we have a poster to promote the Godzilla Riverwalk Kita Kyushu this is like a mall I believe and I'm pretty sure that Shin Godzilla had some crossover promotions with them as well I don't entirely know what they do I think the mall features like the Godzilla statue and they'll probably sell some minus one merchandise and then for Shin Godzilla I think they revealed some sort of teaser poster or something or a teaser ad for Shin Godzilla visiting the mall and here we have a poster of Godzilla minus one at the mall and this actually looks pretty sick as well <laughs> all things considered the Godzilla X Yoshiki under the sky thing happened this was of course a crossover promotion between the two films this is the poster for it this crossover did of course happen as the premiere for Yoshiki under the sky happened and Godzilla arrived at the premiere and I'm just happy to see that it was the Heisei Godzilla which is the more iconic Godzilla because for a long time they've been featuring the Millennium design specifically that 2000 design so I think it was cool to see that it was the Heisei Godzilla attending the premiere of course that is the suit that looks the most like minus one so that's pretty cool speaking of Godzilla crossovers and collaborations the Godzilla X Shiso Shochu was a limited quantity drink that was revealed I think the art for it's really wonderful this was to celebrate the 30th anniversary of this spirits company this is a weird two-eyed fish thing flying at Godzilla here but I think the art overall is very pretty I like the minus one design they've got on here that just looks really nice and then the bottles look really slick I think these look great I don't know how they taste but they look really great and so I just wanted to shout out the art here because I think that these bottles came out looking really nice good collector's edition stuff right there as we all know the minus one official poster dropped in September that was the Godzilla minus one poster it was our first true poster for the film it looked wonderful in addition to that a United States poster dropped that revealed some formats that the movie would be screening in the United States including IMAX 40x MX40 and so that's pretty exciting it's unknown if it will actually play in those formats in America but it's very likely also there was a minus one TV spot 2 that played uh, in September this was in addition to the trailer so it was just a re-edit of the trailer that came out following the trailers release the Godzilla minus one early concept sketch signed by Yamazaki was put on display at the Godzilla store Tokyo now this had previously been on display at the Yamazaki exhibit and so we've talked about it before kind of fascinating to see how the design evolved specifically the fact that they amped those dorsal spines up so much for the final design but it's really cool to see here so this was put on display at the Godzilla store Tokyo so it's pretty sick I think that's awesome that they got to put that thing out there and I hope people enjoyed and in case you're wondering the QR code there takes you to the official Godzilla minus one Japanese website so you can just visit that if you want Godzilla minus one's runtime was listed on a website that was showing which theaters would be playing the film Godzilla minus one is listed as two hours and five minutes long which actually is not too horrible by today's standards that makes it the fourth longest Godzilla film it's currently tied with Final Wars but that's not bad at all I actually kind of like that it's about two hours and I don't really want movies to go too far over two hours so pretty decent just means they'll have a lot of time to unpack the post-war trauma and then we'll get some good Godzilla action within there Godzilla minus one's producer Minami Ichikawa spoke on the film and what he had to say was that the film was set right after the 
the war because there was no SDF. That was what drew them to that time period. No weapons or ammunition means that from the starting point, Godzilla's attack will seem hopeless and Japan will be defenseless. That was what was so interesting about the time period for them. Director Takashi Yamazaki spoke on the film, stating that he always imagined Godzilla as a nuclear threat, and he always viewed him as the shadow of war come to life in the shape of a monster, which is what we exactly see in the Minus One trailer. He says that's why he set the film post-war, and that that's what he's always wanted to do for a Godzilla movie, and we've known that because that's what he teased back in Always, all the way back in like 2009. This guy's been working for this for a long time, it's something he's clearly thought about a lot. When speaking about Shin Godzilla, Yamazaki had some interesting things to say. He said that he also considered the idea of touching upon the Great East Japan Earthquake, which was the inspiration for Shin Godzilla, but because Shin Godzilla covered the topic too vividly and specifically, he wanted to do something else so that he wasn't retreading that material. That's why he decided to go post-war. The decision to go post-war was made to counter Shin Godzilla so that they wouldn't step on each other's toes. That way each film brings something unique to the table, and I could not agree more. That is a wonderful idea. It makes this movie feel so fresh and new in the modern landscape, especially because the MonsterVerse already has Godzilla in the future. We've got Shin Godzilla, which was in the present, and now this is taking us all the way back to Godzilla's roots. In fact, even before that. When the Godzilla Minus One official trailer dropped at the very start of September, it trended on YouTube immediately and hit 1 million views within just hours, which was pretty big for Toho. One day afterward, the trailer already had accumulated 4.2 million views, and after a week, the trailer hit 10 million views. And this was something so big and wonderful that Toho celebrated. They were excited that the trailer didn't just hit 10 million views in Japan, but also had massive amounts of support from the United States as well. And so to celebrate this, they released four new HD stills for Godzilla Minus One. Now these don't look exactly new to most people anymore because we've shown them off on the channel many, many times in videos. I've just never dedicated a news topic to them. And because these things are a month old at this point, so of course they're not gonna be exactly fresh, but I wanted to go through them quickly. The first one shows Godzilla with the train in his mouth, then it shows that Godzilla is gonna be standing all the way up with that thing in his mouth, just like he does in the original film. And I think that's just wonderful and horrifying. I think it's gonna lead to a very intense and traumatic situation. It also gives Godzilla this really stiff suit-like look. I don't know what it is about this image, but he just looks so stiff and suit-like. It's really, really wonderful. The photo also does a wonderful job showing off the scar on Godzilla's cheek and his super thick new dorsal spines. I love it. The next image is an HD image of that nuke going off in Ginza, blowing up Godzilla. That's wonderful stuff right there. We've seen that in the trailer in action already, but this one just gives us a little bit sharper of a look at it. This next one shows Godzilla walking through Hibiya. You can see the Ginza clock tower in the background, and he's walking next to a building which I've really struggled to identify, but it is an iconic historical building in the area. And this just shows, again, Godzilla's got this really stiff suit-like posture that just shows that they clearly understood and respected the way that Godzilla should move, and they've done a very good job adapting Godzilla very faithfully from the past. He's also got this really unsettling smile in this photo that I really enjoy. The next one is this wonderful one of Oishi and Shikishima, and I think this is going to be the two of them meeting back up in the city after she survives the train attack. This is going to be Shikishima probably coming to her. He probably seeks her out in order to rescue her from Godzilla, and they're going to try and escape the city together. I don't know what exactly they're turning around to see here, but this very well could be them stopping to look up as like a bomber flies overhead and drops a bomb on Godzilla or something. I think that this shot probably happens moments before the big explosion goes off. And those are our four photos, and they're great. And that's our time here today, guys. So I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below. Thank you guys all so much for the support I get. By supporting the Patreon, you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.